I want to debunk the myth that training, working out, increases your testosterone levels. Every single male that you talk to in the gym is going to tell you that by working out, they're increasing their testosterone levels. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is entirely wrong. See, there's actually a completely different relationship and I wanna break it down. I'm not saying that you need to become a couch potato, but I'm saying that you need to hear me out and be a little bit more strategic with how you structure your workouts. So I wanna talk about two different kinds of hormones here. I wanna talk about anabolic hormones, okay? I'm talking about hormones like testosterone, like insulin, like growth hormone. These are hormones that increase protein synthesis and uptake. So they're hormones that actually allow the body to utilize protein to build muscle. The other category of hormones we're gonna talk about are the catabolic ones. I'm talking about cortisol, which we all know about. I'm talking about adrenaline, which most of us know about, and I'm talking about glucagon, which is essentially the opposite of insulin. Catabolic hormones break down our muscle tissue. They destroy it. Not always a bad thing, but in this case, probably is. I want you to think of testosterone and cortisol like a gas and brake, okay? If testosterone is the accelerator, then cortisol is the brake, sometimes even the emergency brake. And how it ends up working is because your cortisol levels elevate, your testosterone levels naturally come down. This is called homeostasis, and it's our body's inherent way of finding balance within our hormones. It's a critical thing. Now, what about the correlation between cortisol and exercise? Because that's why we're all here, right? We wanna know what exercise is doing to our bodies and how we can manipulate it and take advantage of it a little bit. So we have to remember that exercise is a stress, okay? So when we're putting our body under stress in the gym or out running, we are eliciting a cortisol response. It's important to know what the role of cortisol is when it comes to exercise, though. You see, the job of cortisol is to elevate our blood glucose so that sugar can get to the organs and sugar can get to the muscle so that we can actually perform the activity at hand. Now this is all fine and dandy and we all know that this occurs, but what a lot of people don't know is that when we have long extended bouts of exercise, we have so much cortisol that it actually causes an adrenal gland enlargement. That adrenal gland enlargement allows us to chronically produce too much cortisol, which of course has an inverse relationship with testosterone. So do the simple math. Now, when we train for extended periods of time too, we also end up having immunosuppression, meaning our immune system is being worn down. This in and of itself affects the reproductive system. It affects our estrogen levels, it affects our testosterone levels, and it affects other reproductive hormones, which play a big role in not only a healthy life, but getting the most out of your workout. Now, what about duration itself? You see, how long you work out plays a big part too. There's a 2012 study by the Journal of Strength and Conditioning that took a significant amount of people and put them under workout stress for extended periods of time. And then they took another group that was under a short amount of time. Well, what they found is quite obviously the extended period of time workout group had a significant elevation in cortisol. But in addition to this, they found that frequency played a part. Why is this important? How many people do you know that feel like they have to go to the gym five days in a row or they have to go for a run five days in a row? Well, intensity plus frequency equals even more cortisol elevation. So in theory, researchers found that cross training, just changing up your workouts, has a significant impact on cortisol. Therefore, you're trying to increase your testosterone levels, cross train, don't be one track mind. You don't need to be that way. So now let's make the exact connection between the cortisol and the testosterone and all this exercise thing I'm talking about. By now you understand the inverse relationship between cortisol and testosterone. So let me reference a 2009 study that I thought was extremely interesting. This study took 286 individuals, divided them into two groups, but both groups performed the same amount of activity. They ran for two hours, five days a week for 60 days. That's more than I would wanna do. But what they did is they took those two groups. One group they had run at moderate intensity, about 60% of their VO2 max. The other group ran at a higher intensity, about 80% of their VO2 max. Well, it wasn't much of a surprise to find that the 80% intensity group had a significant reduction in testosterone. Now both groups saw a reduction in testosterone, but about twice as much with the 80% group. So just the difference between 60% VO2 max and 80% VO2 max elicited a much stronger testosterone decline. Now, what was even more interesting about this study is after implementing a recovery phase for about 30 to 36 weeks, both groups had their testosterone levels return to normal. So what we have to weigh in is where's the balance between our mental side feeling like we need to work out hard every day and the actual hormonal structure that really is making it all possible. 
Because in my opinion, hormones are everything when it comes to dictating what our body does. So if we don't protect our hormones simply because we feel the need that we need to go to the gym and work harder and harder every single day because of our egos, then we're doing ourselves a disservice. We definitely need to focus on hormones as the critical component. So as always, I'm Thomas DeLauer. Make sure that you comment and let me know what kind of videos you wanna see, or if you have any particular questions pertaining to this topic, so that myself and my team can dive into the research and find the answers for you so that you stay locked in here on my channel. I'll see you soon.